Hello YouTube. What I'm going to do today is because I'm going to kind of back up what I was doing, I guess, about two or three videos ago. And I showed how I make my shark leaders. And I will put a link below of that video. How I do my shark leaders when I'm running and gunning behind the shrimp boats. In that video, I said I was about to run out of my leader material. You can go right to Amazon. I did. And this is my shark leader material. It is the Surflon. And I got a big old spool of it. Care of my affiliates program. Yes, my affiliates program, my tools of the trade page. Y'all have patronized that enough that I was in dire need of more surflon. And the proceeds of me being an affiliate for Amazon with my Amazon tools of the trade page, I ended up being able to put $24, yes, $24, towards this $30 plus dollar bill. 90 pound camo, meaning it's brown. 300 feet, this costs about 30 something bucks. This is going to lead into the simplest way to king mackerel fish. I just had a very successful day. Granted, it was the first time I really got to get out there and do this with four customers. This time we trolled. And it's the reason, the only reason I ended up trolling is because of the fact that it was a decent day. And they didn't get seasick and I didn't have little kids on the boat. Let's go into the absolute easiest way to go offshore on the reefs and catch yourself a King Macaralis also known as Kingfish, or King Max, or Slimies. Well, you'll catch everything else besides them too. This is something I picked up at a bargain bin. This is 60 pound, one by seven. That means it's one with seven spun around, stainless cable, 300 feet, 60 pound Malin. That says Malin underneath there. The Trident 7. American Fishing Wire sells exactly the same thing. It just won't be called Surf Lawn. Nylon coated 1x7 stainless steel leader wire. You don't do the Kingfish rigs with nylon coated. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. There you go. I got it coming off the spool. All right, so I got a whole bunch of this uh, one by seven stranded wire. And I'm, the, I'm gonna lead you into something that makes this completely idiot proof, okay? So normally around in Northeast Florida, we use number four, four times strong eager claw trebles. Well, you can also use something like that. That is a VMC number four. We're not tournament kingfishing here, folks. We're going out and catching us a few slimies and then we're coming home, All right? So you got your spool. You, can, you don't have to cut it. You pull some off. And what you're gonna do is here's your, your end, there's the end, and you're going to give yourself a bunch. 
Okay, you're going to put on a hook. You're going to give yourself a bunch here. Give yourself a foot or so. Okay, you're going to take this hook that's on there. And you're going to make a loop. And you're going to come to the back of the loop. Let me do it again. I want to make sure everybody knows this. All right. You pinch it with your finger. The hook's going to get in the way. Hold the hook out of the way. Bring it around. See how I just brought the tag in that I got this foot hanging off of here. Bring it around. Pinch that too. Then run this through the big loop. Now you just made a figure eight. And what you're going to do is you're just going to tighten that up. Straighten it up. There's your figure eight. There is your figure eight right there. What I do is I take my big old old style fisherman pliers back from when stuff was made in America and made right. And what I do is I give it a jerk. Boom. And I tighten it up. That is so secure. Being that this is 60. I'm not fooling around doing super light stuff. You could catch who the hell knows out there. And you know what? I want my customers to be able to get it to the boat. You got a figure eight knot there. Then you're going to come down to your tag. And you're going to think about how big a baits are you going to use. Are you using live bait? Are you using dead bait? I'm not a big live bait troller guy. I don't want to go so slow I feel like I'm going into yesterday. I like moving along. I want to cover some ground. When I was out yesterday, what I was doing is I was using my kicker and we were moving along at a pretty good clip. All right. So then you're going to take your next treble and you're going to put that over. Well, I like using dead cigar minnows. I've caught more king mackerel on dead cigar minnows than anything I've ever used in my entire fishing career. All right. We've caught sailfish on dead cigar minnows, bonita on dead cigar minnows, cobia on dead cigar minnows, 45 pound king mackerel just outside Jacksonville Beach Pier on dead cigar minnows. You're going to do the same thing. The dead cigar minnow is going to range about that big, which is going to be five to six inches. That's what the cigar minnows have been lately in the five pound box. So you're going to figure out there's, here's your other hook and you're going to go there. You're going to make another loop and you're going to bring it around. Give yourself, there's the other one. You're going to bring it around. Get that hook out of the way. Hold it. Push it through. All right, get that hook out of the way. And you're going to tighten it up. I go in, grab my quality pliers again, and I give it a little jerk. Tightens it up. Then, there you go. That's how quick you've got two treble hooks ready to go. These are usually one-time good deal king mackerel rigs. So what do you do with the tag here? I leave about a half inch. Nothing's gonna hurt it. You're gonna see this straightens right up. And look, there you go. I'm still connected to my spool over here. I didn't cut a length. You can, but you don't have to, All right? 
So there you go. There's your king mackerel rig already made. But there's more. Okay, so now I am going to figure my length. Normally, 24 inches or so. There's my hook. I'm going to pull it. Pull it up here. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut my length now. All right. There is my rig. There's the rest of it all right here. See it all? That's how long it is. Okay. If you're like me, you despise wasting hours of your customer's time. If you don't have customers, then you might be wasting your kids, your wife, or your fishing buddy's time. Those two hour looking for bait, those two hours that you're going to spend running up and down the beach looking for pogies or jigging up live bait. I'm not going out offshore. Me, I'm not going out there blue blazes for 30 miles. I'm going to a near shore reef. I want to catch a couple kings. That's all. We're looking for some action, right? So what do I do? This is my, this is, I always have to reiterate because people will jump all over you on YouTube. This is what I do. In my bag over here, I got a bunch of one ounce eggs. What do I do with this one ounce egg? Well, if you can see, there would be the hole on the end of the one ounce egg. That's the other side. I have a little divot hole in my workbench and I drill out the back side hole of a one ounce egg sinker. Remember, this is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So, your cigar minnows are dead. They're frozen in a box. Before you leave the dock, break open that box. Get a bucket of some salt water. You could even throw a little, you could even make another little brine solution. I used to do it. Get a little bag of rock salt, sea salt, something, anything. No, you know, no, you don't want no iodine in it. Nothing like that. You just want plain salt natural salt I got rock salt put it in a bucket stir it up melt it melt your cigar minnows in that brine so by the time you get to the spot and get on that first bite well the sun is not even up all the way yet because what you didn't leave out and run 10 miles down the beach hunting up pogies. You didn't stop and have to jig up bait with the sabiki rigs. Because why? You got a box or two of dead cigar minnows in your cooler. So you break up half that box and you soak them in the brine solution that you just made in a bucket in the back of the boat. So you get out there to the reef and you're ready to go. You're there before the rest of them. Unless you're like me, because I got a, I got a slow boat. I'm not a, I'm not a haul butt kind of guy. I just put it in tugboat mode. That's how I go. You know, I don't want to scare anybody. So you got your kingfish rigs, and you say to yourself, "Well, how the hell do I troll dead cigar minnows?" Do you know that dead cigar minnows used to be the staple of life? Ballyhoo was the staple of life. Trolling dead bait. Way before all this other stuff. But remember, you're not going out fishing like it's a king mackerel tournament. You're just going out to catch some fish. Spend the morning at a near shore reef. 
a little further than near shore reef, whatever. What do you got? You got your cigar minas in your bucket. They're thawing gently in a little brine solution. You don't have to do brine, but you can. You can brine them up. Again, they were probably dipped in some salt before they were flash frozen in a five pound box that you got from your local bait shop. So what you do is you're thawing them out. I don't have one here. I will possibly do a follow-up video of what to do. But let's pretend, okay? Let's pretend that this 35 millimeter container full of swivels is a dead cigar minnow. Here's the cigar minnow's tail, here's his head. When you pull him out of the brine, what you wanna do is have him straight up and down. His little fork tail will be this way, like this. And what you're gonna do is you back it up with your your bot, your finger, and you pop, 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 up to about the belly section. In the tail, you wanna kinda pop them, and you'll heal the, you'll heal the bones crack. Pop, pop, pop. Then you're gonna take them and flip them sideways, and you're gonna give a little pop, 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 pop. And then you go to the, underbelly part of the cigar minnow and you go pop 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 and then he's got a little anal fin and that's kind of prickly on a cigar minnow you pop kind of just massage it until you get to that little anal fin that's going to prick you don't really go any further because then you're popping and you're pushing his guts okay so you're going to work that then you'll maybe go up and now here's the top of the bait again near the dorsal fin and the head. Then you're just going to give them a little light squeezes. I do this as I'm driving up to a spot that I'm getting ready to troll where I stop about a mile from where I want to start. So then I'm going to squeeze them and I'm going to then take them and I'm going to bend them. I'm going to work them back and forth. I'm going to make them limber, but don't break the skin of the bait. Be very delicate, right? So then you're going to say, well, what do I do with that cigar minnow? Well, now you need, because it's a dead bait, the key to these sinkers and the reason you're going to drill out. And yeah, I don't have a bunch. I mean, here's how many I carry. Because I'm reusing them. I'm reusing them. There you go, right? You have to put some weight to the head of a dead cigar minnow to give it some guidance through the water. So you're going to take your rig. This is so unfancy, it's almost ridiculous. You're going to take this part that you got the drilled hole and you're gonna put it through. And you're gonna notice this. The hook, the eye, you gotta drill a hole big enough that that eye goes in there and it locks in. See how that's locked in? Making sure your wire, look how that wire's come in and on bottom, coming in on the bottom, laying flat back here as your stinger rig. So then you're going to take this and it's going to lock in there. It's going to lock in there like that. Well, that's how you pin on your cigar minnow. You go and you hold your cigar minnow and you go take a top hook like this with your stinger and everything laying back real nice like that. And you're going to take both lips from the bottom to the top and you're going to lip latch them through a little bit of the tough, tough part of the head. Okay. And now he's laying on there. So then when you drop this down, it's same as a weighted skirt. So then when you drop this down, it locks on there 
and your cigar minnow is going to be sitting just like this, pinned on there. He's going to have a little bit of chin weight, right? We don't care about colors. We don't care about fancy lures. We don't care. This is simple kiss fishing. You're going to drop them in the water after now you have you put on a swivel and not a big swivel either take a little swivel little 60 pound spro swivel or something like that or tsunami or whatever and you're going to put that on and you're going to do the same exact figure eight knot come around move that swivel up very fiddly and you're going to go through and you're going to be making that figure eight once again run this in slow mo watch it several times if you have to so I pull out my pliers I grab it and I give it a lock that's locking her in so now got that figure eight knot oh I right, here comes my packages for my my kicker motor got the UPS just delivered it I heard him outside so then I'm gonna cut that about a half inch okay you can get fancy Pull that back a little bit. That's not going to go nowhere with the pressure of a fish on it. It's not going nowhere. I just got done using these. All right? It's going to lock in. Now, there's your kingfish rig. Tie this on to your monofilament on your trolling rigs. cinch down on there very very tightly so then that's your entire kingfish rig when you put them in the water bump up the speed of your boat drop it in the water and he's going to want to spin it's going to want to do everything and what you're going to do is you're going to make the speed of your boat where this bait wants to sort it's going to want to maybe lay over but get it so the tail and the whole bait is just the tail's just wagging a little bit pulse them through the water pulse them match your speed get your speed up and then let them on back let it on back put it on your downrigger if it spins a little bit, it's not that big a deal. They still hit it. They will crush it. All right? So that is the simplest rig to go out and just catch king mackerel. Barracudas, bonitas, even like what happened to us, 40 feet on a downrigger, a 15-pound red snapper came up and engulfed that cigar minnow so there you go uh ask any questions i will try to help you but i can't be in your living room i can't be at your workbench please watch the video multiple times if you have to nobody's born knowing all this but that i want to keep everything major simple I don't use any fancy skirts. I'm not going to spend a ton of money on a bunch of crap. Okay? That right there with a cigar minnow on will lead the cigar minnow and at the same time keep it under the surface if you're running a flat line. If you're putting it on a downrigger, it's going to do the same thing. 
And, and you can also go pretty dang slow with this cigar minnow also. And he's just going to be back there doing this behind the boat. And if you don't think they're going to hit it, think again. They're going to hit it. Especially if you're around any schools of bait that are already out there. You don't drive right through the middle of the bait. Circle around, kind of be on the edge of the bait. And if you slow down even, these will sink. Make some turns. The inside one, if you don't have a downrigger, or even if you do, turn towards, if your downrigger's on this side of your boat, turn. That's going to drop everything down even further. It's going to speed up the outside. I usually only troll with a downrigger and one flat line, maybe three lines. Okay, and that's a judgment call that you'll have to do yourself. But when you turn, always remember, one will sink, one will speed up. And that's how you can be moving your baits within multiple levels of water. So that's how I do it. I'm an old cigar minnow troller. I hate throwing cast nets. And I want to be out there early. On Saturday, we stopped behind a shrimp boat and had a spinner shark on that was an absolute monster brute. And we didn't get out there as early as we should have. First bait in the water on the downrigger was not even down five seconds we caught a shark. Then we had double headers. We had the red snapper and a king mackerel. Then we caught another king mackerel. Then we caught another king mackerel. Another king mackerel. So, I mean, it was good action. And by 1130, quarter to 12, we're beating feet. We're not getting stuck in those storms and high wind or nothing. Came back, finished up at the shrimp boats, caught a couple more sharks. Everybody was wore out. Came on back, cleaned them up. They took them to the local seafood restaurant around the corner to have some fried kingfish dinner. So there you go. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, as everybody always says. Thumbs up, a like, the whole nine, whatever you call it. And uh, go ahead and make a comment. But if you have to watch this a couple times, watch it a couple times. It is nothing more than that wire gripping down on itself on a figure eight knot for both the swivel, this hook, and this hook. Remember, one time good deal. That's the reason why I've got an entire bag here full of them. Full of them. All right? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. And I'll hopefully be able to have a moment to actually show you hooking one of these up and deploying it. I don't even get it right all the time. Sometimes he's kind of spinning around a little bit. I don't care. I'm putting the dang thing back out there. I'm putting it out. Long as it's not twirling up the whole world. You don't want it being, you don't want a bill dance helicopter lure behind your boat. Okay? You want it just doing this. That's what a cigar minute should be doing. But it should be up a little bit and wagging like that. All right? I'll see you on the next one. Thank you much for watching. Sitting around the house, got nothing to do. I think I'll go fishing, scare away the blue.